Proverbs chapter 15, verse 16. Better is little with the fear of Yahweh than great treasure and trouble therewith. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the Brother Taz of War once again with another lesson. And I'll get straight to the point. All right, we're in the book of Proverbs, the 15th chapter. And uh, this is King Solomon, which is words of wisdom, which, uh, which plays, you know, which basically lives on forever. The word of the Lord lives on forever from our past to the present. Okay. And even when the kingdom come, the Lord's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this is Proverbs 15 and 7. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Okay, so the lips of the wise disperse knowledge. So when you go before men of the Lord, okay, you what? You hear of knowledge. You hear of uh, edification. You, you hear of uh, ways in which you can build upon your faith okay you're not building upon your flesh to be more fleshly you're building upon the spirit to be more spiritual and that's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai so it says the lips of the wise disperse knowledge but the heart of the foolish doeth not so so the mind of the foolish ones they don't disperse knowledge Okay, which is for you to build and edify, okay, to grow therewith. It says, verse 8, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to Yahweh, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. So what's better, the uh, sacrifice of the wicked or the prayer of the upright, okay, who is honest, who is true, who is sincere, the prayer of the upright is his delight not the one that sacrifice of wickedness the lord said the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the lord okay so you should understand that the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom as the scriptures say but the knowledge okay and understanding of the word of the lord is wisdom okay and righteousness knowledge being wise to do evil don't make you wise okay it just makes you wicked which is waiting upon your destruction so verse 9 it says the way of the wicked is an abomination unto Yahweh but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness so there's a difference between the two once again okay it says the wicked is an abomination to Yahweh all right someone that's lying backbiting truth breakers Lovers of themselves, effeminate, okay? The scriptures say they shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. But it says, but the but he loveth him that follow after righteousness. So is it about a crowd? Is it about numbers? Okay, is it about fame, attention? No, it's about following after righteousness. So verse 10, correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. So this is something you pick up, you know, and you watch. And when you go to correct, you know, a man or a woman, all right, you know, you know that when they get upset because you're coming at, at them with some sort of reproof and correction, the scriptures say correction is grievous, meaning they look at you checking them reproving them according to scripture you know chastising them they don't look at it as love they look at it as something grievous so it says unto him that forsaketh the way he forsaketh the way okay there's only one way and that's the way of truth okay that's the path of righteousness walking that straight gate you can't climb up some other way it says, and he that hateth reproof shall die. So a man that hateth reproof, he's going to die. I'm trying to think of the scripture 
where it says a man that hateth reproof findeth excuse according to his will, roughly paraphrasing. You know, a wicked man will find an excuse according to his will so that he can't be corrected. You see? So it says, verse 11, hell and destruction. And, and I must say, you got a lot of these guys right now, okay, which is supposed to be leaders in these different camps. You know, they're going off in doctrine. Okay, they just spewing out madness. Okay, really showing their true colors. And here at Great Millstone, start with our apostles and elders, men on down. We're here to do what? Defend the gospel, to be a correction. You know, even if we go off, you know, we, we get corrected and we get corrected through the brotherhood. So there's no bias. You know, brothers here at Great Millstone get checked from men that's over them or men in the camp. OK, who could could have possibly, you know, could be younger, could say something that you may be doing and then you think, you know, so correction, sometimes it could be hard. And sometimes it just could be, you know, a little slap on the wrist. But a righteous man looketh well for what's going. So that's not grievous. That's 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 the water, you know. Thank you, so that he may grow by, grow thereby, as a righteous tree, being planted by the water, by the river, as the scriptures say. So it says, and he that hateth reproof shall die. So if you hate to be corrected, you are going to die. All right. So in the men of the Lord. When the fiery spirit come upon them and brothers in the spirit and saying, most high going to destroy you. Well, guess what? That's in righteousness because the scriptures back that up. Okay, verse 11. Hell and destruction are before Yahweh. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. You know, a scorn is someone who scoffs. And uh, just for edification, for myself's sake, I never looked this word up. Uh, let's see what it says. Scorner. It says to scorn. Scorn is someone to scorn, to make mouth at. Talk arrogantly. All right. So you got a lot of two thirds and heathens. OK, who scorn at the word. You know, now they're on the comment board heavy. You know, they think it's OK because you don't know what they look like. They would never be before you face to face. And they say whatever comes to their mind. They talk arrogantly, you know, as if, you know, the Most High came and, and gave them the word overnight, all right? When men of the Lord who've been proven through their works, you know, Yahweh Bashem Shai have set up a, a rank. He set up order, you know, mind you, the scriptures say he's not the author of confusion, you know? So it says to scorn, make mouth at, make mouths at, talk arrogantly to boast, you know, scorn is boast, and they don't even know they're, they're boasting because when a man of the Lord go to reproving them, you know, they do the little laugh to stop from crying so that they don't give up their poker face, you know, knowing that you got them, you cut them. And the scriptures, he see it, but he's just scorning on. All right. He starts to boast, you know, proud. You get caught up in that. And the Most High does this for a reason to, to mark you, you know, because you're not humble. It says to scorn, to mock, deride. To interpret language, no, interpreter, ambassador. To be inflated, scoff, acts as a scorner, shows oneself a mocker. Okay, so that's what scorner is. So let's get back and finish it up. It says, a scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. You know, so there's really nothing to do with that guy. It's, you know, basically move on. What the apostles say, you know, we're moving on if you can't get it. You know, it says a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. It says the heart of him that have understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of the fools feed is on foolishness. And that's why when men break out and become demons 
and scoff against the brotherhood here at Great Millstone and get kicked. You know, you have, um, you have, uh, you know, they, they still try to. All right, so lock you. Um, you know, when men get kicked and they become demons, they scoff against the brotherhood, you know, and immediately they get all of these followings. They get all of these uh, reprobates or men who basically degenerates, you know, who was kicked or never came into the truth. That, you know, that scorn and scoff, they, they receive the scorners and scoffers on their side as an audience, you know, to pump and cheerlead them on. So it says, all the heart, the heart of him that have understand and seek of knowledge. That's a righteous man. But the mouth of fools feedeth, feedeth on foolishness. So with everything that's foolish, they there. They there to see that. You know, they there to be on that. It says, all the days of the afflicted are evil. But he that is of a merry heart have a continued feast and that's what's up with guys now you know guys are comfortable and i'm talking about different these different camps you know they celebrate and all of their holiday their holy days excuse me they celebrate in all of their holy days and they have a merry heart they they giving into marriage you know they having great feasts they making money you know they drinking you know lots of good yayun you know and they're always in that type of spirit of a merry heart which is really that's not balance. It's nothing wrong with being merry. But remember, we're in captivity. And this is not our rest. The new covenant has not been activated. Okay, we're still in sinful flesh waiting on the second coming of our Lord. So really, what is there to be too much merry about? Okay, and that's not balance. And then here it is, a man of the Lord, a defender of Yahweh B'Hashim Yahweh Shah's gospel. He speaks correction. And these men automatically hate. Because you're messing up their party, you know, you're making them think, you're making them go into a, 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 a heart of sorrow, you know, when they don't want to feel like that, you know, they don't want to think about that. So they get, they gain together and they scorn and they think they're justified in their wickedness. But the Lord got a trick for you guys. He has you blinded, you know, he has you blinded. It says, but he that is of a merry heart have a continued feast. And here's the last verse, better is a little, better is little with the fear of Yahweh than great treasures and trouble therewith. So it's better to have little than to have abundance of things today in this wicked world. Because a man that have little, have but little ways to fall. A man that have but much, okay, he has a, fall, a longer fall, which is hard to get up from. All right. When you when you don't when you have little and you fall, you know, you get you get back up. But when you have lots of an abundance of treasures and you're merry in heart continually, all right, never sorrowing, giving prayer, you know, you start to whack worse. You know, you start to feed your flesh and you forget about being sincere and truthful. Because why? You got numbers now. Well, guess what? He a man that sits on high when he falls. He breaks a leg, okay? He dislocates a hip. You know, he, he might nudge his elbow, you know? And guess what? It's hard for him to get up. And that's why, just uh, thinking of the parable with Yahweh Shai said, you know, it's, it's hardly, hardly for a rich man to enter into the kingdom, you know? So, oh, what's that, James 5? The Lord said, uh, uh, let me get that and close out. This is James chapter 5. Uh, damn, what else could you This is James chapter 2, verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor, do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. All right, you know, so basically that's the point. I hope you were edified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash.
Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.